Hey everybody, Lauren here from Counter Holiday Lights. We are back. Hopefully you guys all had an amazing 2021 holiday lighting season. I know ours was. We only lost a couple of pixels. Of course, they were way up high. Not easy ones on the ground to, to replace. We saw no blue smoke throughout the entire season. The lines weren't too terribly long in front of our house and all of our neighbors were happy and thrilled with the display. So all in all, it was great for everybody, including ourselves. We really had a, a lot of fun and got a lot of joy out of uh, all the shiny faces that we got to see throughout the holiday season. So with that, we thought before we start showcasing any new build videos for 2022 that we've got in planning, that we would take you on our behind the scenes view. Kind of show you what we did in 2021. We wanted to show you both Halloween and Christmas, but for some reason our Christmas footage got lost. So it's just gonna strictly be Halloween even though we may reference that we're going to show you Christmas in some of our clips uh, that we took during the Halloween time frame. All you're going to miss out really is on our snowflakes and our candy canes, and we've got separate individual videos we've done on those, so if you really need to see them, they'll be there for you to reference. We're also going to make sure we put in the description everything that we uh, had in our display and where we got the props from or the lights or the ground anchors, you name it. We'll have all that in there, so if there's anything that you want to try to find, you'll be able to find it really quickly. And with that, let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. Well, like I'm sure my goofy intro stated, this is the behind the scenes 2021 setup. Things are a little bit different uh, than last year's. We've expanded our build a little bit here for our display and we thought this would be the perfect opportunity is uh, today is Halloween it will be the last day that this setup is up so we're going to start the video with this and then we will continue it with the transition um, tomorrow when we take everything down from Halloween and put up the stuff that is for Christmas so uh, there's our router right there that we route everything through and then of course up uh, there we got a little Eero puck so we get the good Wi-Fi signal out here in the garage. And then we're running a Pi 4, uh, the same as we were last year. That's my speaker so I can hear the music if I need to, as well as for Halloween it will be out in the yard. It runs uh, off battery, so it's nice. We have my emergency kit here for fixes and stuff. Um, any kind of wire splicing I need to do just for a quick repair before I can take it down to a permanent one. And if I can't figure it out, that's what that bottle's for. Or a Zoom room. One of the two. Take your choice. So far, these are the uh, replacements for this year. Not too bad out of the uh, old pixels I have in my yard. It's expected, but it happens. No big deal. No need to do anything about it. You just cut it, fix it, replace it. We've got our uh, F48 right here and a uh, uh, receiver. And this is more just so we can test stuff with this unit uh, while we're in the garage or if we're upstairs. Uh, that way we don't have to have a separate receiver box to that we just added. I'm kind of glad to see that the new F48 has one built into it, which is kind of a nice feature for all of that. And then, of course, we got the good old-fashioned old-school Ramsey. It's been a workhorse since 2006 I've had that thing going. Uh, but I do have uh, a modern uh, backup should that old beast finally decide to give out. I don't want to be caught short. It's always good to have some backups. One thing I don't have backups this year is the main board, which is something I want to try to set up for next year. A beautiful sunny day here for Halloween too. You can see we've got the Gilbert Engineering HD pixel trim and we've got the 450 node spiders and then we just put this up yesterday. A fantastic uh, Matrix and the impression style, yeah, it's not really Halloween theme, but it will work. And at night, you really don't know there's any stripes on it. <laughs> to kind of take a close look, the mounting, all of my HD mounting is with the magnets. As you can see here, I got the, the magnets that I made. And we'll uh, put a link to the video up above, as well as anything else that we kind of talk about. We'll try to link it for you. But it's, it's all held up with the magnets. And then the spiders are mounts that we got from Inspire Light Show. He does has some great mounts and great plans. And we built this mounting system 
uh, so that we can secure it to the house as well as when we do our changeover our snowflakes go in the exact same spot on that exact same pole so there's no need for a separate mounting system for my props and we use the same thing for the screen on either side you'll see one of the inspire light shows main brackets uh, which you can screw in screw tight and then we have it resting on all the weight resting on the pipe so the pipes are taking the weight and the brackets are basically just holding it in place so that it doesn't tilt uh, and tip and then you can see also on our matrix that we wrap it like a binding and the reason we decided to do that this year is last year we did it with the zip ties and nothing wrong with doing that but we found that they would tend to uh, break over time and then it start we had to hit some sagging points and I'd have to go up and make some repairs just the weight was too much I mean, you can see it's sort of bowing a little bit just from the weight of the pixels 2,000 pixels is a lot but with this it is firmly secured into place and it's not going to go anywhere we did that all the way around on it uh, to fill it in completely so let's take you to the porch and here we'll get a backup view later but we've got our oh, very nice panels these are v4 panels from Boscoyo and there's two panels on each so it's 168 nodes per panel and that makes up each of our three pillars and then of course up top we have uh fire sickles as we call them these are the gilbert engineering uh, icicles that we flipped upside down and the ones on the gutters are just held on with uh, regular gutter clips that we got from inspire light show but the upper ones here are over the peak are held on with magnets and these are actually are from uh matos they're his magnets they're a very nice magnet also and they held up and then nicely we had several windstorms and several times the ones on the gutters either flipped up which is no big deal but a couple of times they blew off completely under the ground so we had to replace them but the ones with the magnets did not budge they stayed in place and we have one magnet about every foot up there so there's five magnet mounts on each and I've got to drill any holes because my flashing up there on my peaks is metal and it just sticks right in uh, sticks right to it so that is what we did with that door trim same thing as the garage trim and the window trim and you can see there's a, the magnet mounts that we made and then around the window because we're running out we got some more magnet mounts from Matos Design. And they did a great job of holding all the lights up when it came to that. As far as my controllers, I've got five of them that come off the F48. And uh, this one runs the two spiders as well as the Matrix, a half on each because I didn't want to overload the single power supply on each, so I slipped the Matrix between both. Uh, next year, we'll probably replace that with a F16 to run the whole thing with a couple power supplies built into it so I don't have to worry about that but that's what we had to use for now to make sure that that was done and then of course behind every pillar I've got a box and these are just taking, uh, held on with little wiring cables and uh, locked them in this is stuff you do guy wires with that held to each of them and then we also have some floodlights 20 uh, watt floodlights that Behind each pillar, which is nice. We'll go ahead and take a look and we'll side one of these. Just standard, and it's two, even though I only use one of the receivers in each. I built these uh, just in case one blows. I can just switch everything from one side over to the other side and be back in business real quick like. that is that one so let's after that well I guess we'll just take you out into uh, the yard we'll start with the back of the tree I guess here this is our uh, 
Matos design tree this year. We went with his design with the square tubing. And we got the winch. And you go all the way up and you can see his topper up there. And we use the carabines to put the strips on. It's 3,200 lights. I actually got these strips uh, from Holiday Coro because I wanted one and a half inch spacing, which meant for a 12 and a half foot tree, it would be 100 lights per strip, 200 per port, uh, which worked out really well. And then the main controller. is the F-16 with the expansion. We're running four power supplies in there. And there's still plenty of ports left. We're not using them all. The base ring is just EMT. Uh, we had a local metal shop bend it for me. And I have a 12 and a half foot tree, but I only have a five foot ring. I like mine a little bit tighter, so I didn't go with the 50% of the height rule. Uh, it just makes for better imagery on the tree, I think. And I prefer a skinny tree. And there's nothing wrong though with a fat tree. They all do well. One thing too, when you are doing the topper that you're raising up, put some kind of wire on the backside or rope so that when you lower it, you can make sure the top is level. Otherwise it will get stuck up there and you won't get it down without a ladder. So it's just something not to think about there. And of course we're using guy wires, four of them, 26 inch uh, earth anchors in all four corners for the guy wires. Then you can see in the yard, we've got uh, some tombstones and these are from Bascoyo. They're a great tombstone. Uh, you can do a little bit of submodeling, the two separate rings, as well as the lettering, uh, which can make for some cool little patterns you can do. And then they're an even hundred node each, which I like. It's a nice even number. The arches in front are triple arches. Uh, they are from Gilbert Engineering. And I had them actually custom. These are uh, four foot. Normally they sell them in six, but as you can see, I don't have very wide of a yard. So... I wanted four, and they were kind enough to do a custom model for me, so I have a smaller version. Their normal model is 100 per row, uh, so mine are 50 per row, so it's 150 nodes per arch, and they look really cool, uh, all lit up. So that basically is the Halloween setup, and we're going to break away, and when we break back, we will have uh, the Christmas-themed items up. We'll be getting rid of the tombstones, putting in some candy canes, and getting rid of the spiders, and putting up the snowflakes. So we'll talk about those before we close the video out. And then, of course, at the star at top, we have a six-layer star, 270 nodes. Uh, that we also got from Gilbert Engineering. So uh, we love the setup, and it's probably where it's, we're going to stay for quite some time uh, unless we update our pillars maybe make them a little more dense. All right, so I thought today would be a good day to show you kind of the storage as a good ending for this video and how we put everything away for the season. It's a nice sunny uh, February day here in Seattle, so maybe we'll take the, uh, the hot rod out for a spin later on. Wife's beautiful car there, but anyway, for most of the stuff, uh, we use racking and we got the lumber racking and you can get this on Amazon. Um, they also think have it at Home Depot, most hardware stores have it. But Amazon was a little cheaper with free shipping uh, built into it. And you can see up there, uh, we've got 40 feet of icicles and then all of the trim work uh, on our house, uh, whether it's windows, doors, garage, it's all on this one rack unit. And we're gonna put a second rack unit on the other side of the house that will cover um, all of our mega tree strips that we have. So we want a, a better way of storing that. So we're gonna put a second unit. Uh, we've got a chest there that holds all of our supplies in case we have any issues and our mega tree toppers there. And then up above my workbench, there's some storage up there, which holds uh, four tombstones, four three foot candy canes and four triple arches very nicely. Does a good job of that. And then over here, up there, 
we have, I love roof storage and garages. We've got our snowflakes and our giant spiders. And then of course we've got more room to expand up there. So I need it if we put more racking in. And then over here we have all of our controllers and all of our network gear. So it's all in one location as well as our little old fashioned Ramsey FM transmitter, old school and uh, a little dipole antenna. And then over here is where we store uh, the matrix. We actually made it uh, less than eight feet so it would fit uh, in this up step that I have and be out of the way. So a perfect place to store our matrix in the off season. Right now we just have our uh, mega tree strips kind of uh, looped over and then bungeed uh, to that racking, uh, which does okay. Half of it's here, half of it's in the garage, right, uh, the shed right now. So that's how we store everything. We hope you uh, all enjoyed this uh, trip uh, behind our uh, display. And uh, we'll catch you at the uh, wrap up at the end of the video. All right, everybody. Well, that's our video. Hopefully you guys got a lot of information out of that that you found useful or maybe got some ideas that you may want to incorporate. That's kind of the, the neat thing that we really love about this hobby is there's so many people out there showing so many wonderful ideas that there's always something that you can find to take and either put in your display or modify to fit into your display or make things easier on how your display works or goes away. So thank you again for spending a little bit of time with us. We truly appreciate that. I know uh, last year we talked a lot about our uh, Mega Tree video, the new one, version that we're doing, and it is coming out next. We're actually working on it probably right now as you're watching this, so hopefully uh, it will be out within the next couple of weeks for you to be able to enjoy that one. I know a lot of people have been asking about that, so don't worry, it is coming. Uh, we, we hope you stick with us. Uh, we, we can't wait to actually meet some of you maybe down at the Florida Mega Mini. If you're going to be down there, we are going to be flying from Seattle down there. A little, a little bit of jet lag on the first day, but uh, can't wait to share stories with a lot of you. Come here the end of March 1st of April for the Florida Mega Mini. If you've got free time, you may want to check it out and head there. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. If you, if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, we really would appreciate it if you could. It really does help us out. It'll even give us a thumbs up on the video. And we'll put a couple other videos up here that maybe fit in with uh, this particular uh, behind the scenes. With that, we'll see you guys all on the next video.